Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Venice and its expansion, Da Vinci's Workshop. Let's check it out. Before I begin with setup, I should mention this is the board for the expansion that I'm using in my setup here. Now, what we have is each player is going to start with two gondolas. They're going to put them anywhere they want on the board, and they're going to place their gondolier on one of the two of them. That will be their starting space. Depending on how many players there are, you're going to set this little wooden marker to the two, three, four, or five spot on the major council track. And of course, every player is going to have one of their markers here on zero. Score track, of course, is up here, starts at zero. You're going to shuffle a bunch of these tiles and place them out randomly around the board. And if you are playing with the expansion, you'll have Da Vinci here and the general over there. Uh, each player is going to start with this little player board here that gives you one scroll and you start with zero intrigue. Uh, first player will get this useless but very nice metal gold coin. First player also starts with six coin, then every other player after him gets two extra coins. So for instance, second player would have eight, third player would have ten, so on and so forth. You'll shuffle your influence cards, put them over to the side. Same thing as your order cards. You're going to uh, shuffle these out and give three to everyone. They will pick two and then put the other one back in and reshuffle the deck. Everyone's going to have their little assistants over to their sideboard. And they're also going to have two bridges that they can place out later on in the game. If you are playing with the expansion, you'll want to put these little Da Vinci tiles right next to Da Vinci, and you are ready to go. Whoa, one more thing I forgot, optionally, you can also start the game with this little card here. What it does is during the game, they can flip it to gain either five extra coin or two extra scrolls. Once they flip it, that's it. If they keep it unflipped at the end of the game, it's worth four victory points. Beginning with the starting player, they're going to take the world's most useless token, which basically signifies that their first move is free. As you see across this board, getting from building to building or going from area to area costs either one or two coin. Well, this is supposed to cover those coin to let you know that first movement's free, and if they ever want to move addi make additional movements, they have to pay that coin. Something you really don't need in the game. Just remember, your first movement's free. Now, uh, what they would do is they get their first movement for free, of course, pay any extra coin, and then take the action in that area. Now, I won't explain what each area does, but it's very self-explanatory. Let's say they were, you cannot, you must move, you cannot begin your turn where you ended here, so I cannot stay here. I must move to the next building, so let's get, let's say I moved up to this building here. The first thing I'm going to do as the orange player is take one of my orange assistants here, and I'm going to put him on the number one spot right there on the board. I'm going to take that top action, which in this case is just a cube. So I would take a purple cube and put it in my little gondola area. Hopefully that's one of the uh, mission cards I had was purple cubes. Oh no, it's not. Why am I getting a purple cube? Who knows? But either way though, that was my first move. Now your gondolas can hold up to five cubes. That's it. So you may not be able to fill all the orders. Now I should mention that these order cards, as you see, give your reward, your coin, tell you what type of cubes you're trying to go uh, deliver and where to deliver to, so the market. So then I have to find the market area on the board, and here it is over here. So that's where I have to deliver these eventually. After that, it's the end of my turn, and the next player goes. Now, if it was a subsequent turn, my next turn, I would move my gondolier out of this boat into the next boat and would have to move this boat this time. If I didn't want to do that, I could pay three coin and keep my gondolier in this boat for an additional turn. But each time you're going to be moving your gondolier to the different gondolas and moving them. Another thing I should mention in movement is if ever you pass through other boats on your turn. Let's say I passed through this black boat and then parked here at purple. For each boat I pass by, we're each going to gain one intrigue or lose one scroll. Now, intrigue is bad. You don't want to gain too much of it because if you get the max at 10, any additional ones you get would be minus two victory points. But uh, you may have to gain some intrigue here and there or definitely uh, uh, give up one of your scrolls. Either way, you must do that, and both players must do that. So the black player must also do that as well when I pass them by. However, if you're ending your turn in the same building as someone else, then there's no penalty for this. And in fact, let me give you a better example over here. Let's say that the orange player parked it over here. They had passed through black. I guess they started maybe here. They passed through black. They both got an intrigue for that. Or maybe black played a scroll and didn't get an intrigue. Then the uh, orange player ends up there. Now, let's say blue player has already been here previously and they have a man there. So first off, blue player is going to get one victory point because someone else parked in the same space as him. If later on, 
Purple came by, they gained one intrigue, both would gain one intrigue for passing through black, and then if they part there, then this blue would get two victory points, orange would get one, and so on and so forth. Those victory points compound the more people who part their boats in that area. But another thing that happens is this. When orange player first came there, they're also going to be placing one of their assistants there. And let's say they place this assistant here. And if they do that, then this other player automatically moves because you can only have one spot for each one of these characters. And every time that you move in here, let's say it was Blue's turn again and they were over here and they moved back to this building later on, they would automatically move, instead of placing a new assistant, they move their assistant to the next spot. And the further around this square you go, the more actions you can take. So for example, now I can take any one of these actions here, or all four of these actions if I'm in the four spot, and as you see in the four area, you can have multiple uh, assistants there. So you can have one of each assistant in each one of these spaces. However, you do not have that many assist assistants. You have a limited number of assistants, so you won't have them in every building. Uh, at the most, you'll have them in every building, but I believe two. Now, another thing you should keep in mind in the game, the person who deals out their last assistant, you know, they have all their assistants on the board, the first person to do that gets eight victory points as indicated on the board. But anyway, let's say that orange player came back here later on. Here's what would happen. In the second example, uh, uh, the blue player would still get a victory point because they were there first. An orange player would move their character around, but blue player would stay right there because they're not getting pushed out of that level. And of course, if they're already at four and orange player docks there again, they can share that space at four and take all those actions. Now, the actions are very self-explanatory and the rule book's very clear on that, but you won't have any problem understanding the iconography, so I'm not going to go into any actions individually on any of the building. I will say, though, when you need to get more mission cards, you can go to any of these little spots on the board and either get a mission card, as indicated here. Basically, you'll pay the coin. How much coin? Well, coin is... Uh, equal to the amount of mission cards you have in your hand. You can have a max of three in your hand and uh, the amount that you have on your board. Because when you complete one of these missions, you're not only going to get the reward in the coin, but you're going to tuck that card under these three areas and take its ongoing effect. The only time you'll bump one of these out is when you complete maybe your fourth mission and then you'll remove one of these and put a new one in thus tucking the card over to the side here, face down. And the more cards you have in your area, the more expensive it is. So I have three in my hand, I had two ongoing missions. My next mission, if I wanted to buy it, would cost me five coins, so on and so forth. So you would grab the top two cards, look at them, pick which one you want, put the other one at the bottom of the deck, and move on. Now, they also have alternatives at these stops too. This one gives you two coin. This one gives you a scroll and a victory point if you don't want a mission card. But that's how you can gain more mission cards. Another permanent area on the board is over here, the major council. When you go here, it'll let you move up the track one and any additional space for every person that is uh, ahead of you. Another permanent action on the board is the major council here. When you park your gondola here, your marker can either move up one plus another one, so I'd move it up two there, or instead, I could spend four coin to put one of my bridges out on the board. What does a bridge do? Well, first off, a bridge makes movement for you absolutely free. Now, let's say I start here and I move through the, my bridge on my first turn. Do I get to use my token and get my now free movement from my second turn? No, this is always for your first move. Any additional moves could be, like if I was here, I could get my first move for free there and my second move for free as well because I'm moving under a bridge. Also, another great thing is every time anyone moves under a bridge, I get a coin and those players gain an entry. And you only have two bridges in the game, so you want to put them out uh, kind of where it will help you the most. Now, going back to the buildings, these will give you random things. Sometimes they'll give you uh, different color cubes, scrolls, entry cards. Uh, I'm sorry, influence cards here. These influence cards you get, they have little special rule breaks and little actions you can do. You would play this at the beginning of your next turn. You couldn't play it on the turn that you received it, but on the beginning of your next turn, you could play one influence card per turn. Uh, also, some of them will give you uh, intrigue, which is bad, but you can't avoid that. So if you're going to take the two scrolls, you must take the intrigue as well in the game. And some of them give you coins, some of them give you victory points. A lot of them give you victory points if you get toward the end. Uh, if you get your assistant toward the end, but those are these cards here. Now, the other thing that I should mention is the two little uh, areas for the expansion. Uh, you have Da Vinci here and the Admiral over there. If you go over here and you pick up, uh, if you choose the Admiral, 
what the, or there's two options you can do over here in this area. You can either pay a coin, lose an intrigue, and go up one on this little council track, or I could complete a mission in my hand. So if I have the cubes, and even though I'm not in the market, I could go ahead and complete this, gain the victory points, gain the six coin, and tuck it underneath my board to get its ongoing effect. Or instead, I could place the Admiral in my boat instead of my gondolier. I'd remove my gondolier and move the Admiral in there. What's the Admiral do? Well, for as long as I have him, I can pass through as many boats as I, I want to, and I will never gain intrigue, and neither will other players. Gaining intrigue in the game is really bad. I'll explain it later. Now, if another player parked their boat there and they wanted the Admiral instead, that I, they, I would give it to them and then put my uh, gondola guy back in and then they would put their ad, uh, their, their, the Admiral into their boat. Uh, same thing with Da Vinci. Uh, here you can either pay one cube to get one of these little tokens. You can have up to two max. These are flying machines. And what you can do on your movement is cash it in and move anywhere you want to on the board. I should also mention that a player may not end his turn on the boat that's the same as his. So that move would be illegal. I could pass through it without gaining entry, but uh, I could not land or be or in my turn on the same space as one of my other boats. But the flying machine lets you go to any space. Or you could take Da Vinci. And what you would do is, of course, you would remove him, replace your gondolier with Da Vinci. And what that means is you can finish any one of these missions by not avoiding to pay a scroll or avoiding to pay one of the color cubes. It just makes delivering missions a little bit easier. Again, if someone else were to take Da Vinci from here, you just give them Da Vinci and replace him back with your gondolier in that, in that little boat there. Uh, I should also mention the other thing here is, uh, and, and without getting Da Vinci, you can also move two of your assistants uh, one up each of the tracks. So for example, let's say Blue went there, they could say, okay, I wanna move two of my assistants, I'll move this guy to the two, and I'll move this guy to the three. They can't be in the same spot, but that's what the other additional action is. Now the game begins to die down when one person hits the mark of wherever this in-game marker is. And then you place it up here where you take three more, you do three more rounds and then end the game. In those last three rounds, people are scrambling probably to try to get some last minute orders placed. Once that's done, you're gonna do a few scorings here. First one is on the major council track. Depending on the number of players, you earn victory points on where you're at. Then secondly, how many gondoliers you have out. If you have one to six gondoliers out, you're gonna score zero additional points. If you have seven or eight, then you're gonna get half of the points on the major track rounded down. So in this example, I ended at 14. Let's say I had seven or eight people out, I'd get another seven points. However, if I had nine or 10 of my people out, then in that case, I would gain the full amount of points that are on that victory track. After that, you're going to subtract uh, influence for every two scrolls. So for instance, I had, let's say I had seven points, I could get rid of six of them to get rid of three intrigue there. And every four coins you have left over count as a victory point. So you could cash this in for victory points. But one very important thing is whoever has the most uh, intrigue at the end of the game is automatically out. And if there's a tie, it's whoever went last. So uh, first player would beat second player and so on and so forth. After that, whoever has the most victory points wins. There is another mini expansion here. It's called the Taxman. What you do is you're gonna shuffle either the A or B stack of the smuggler cards. This is for a solo game. You're gonna deal out the first one and that's where he's gonna go at first. And then you're gonna deal out the second one and say, ah, that's where he wants to travel. So if anyone wanted to pick him up at the Senate and drop him off, he goes into your boat. So he'll take up two cubes. If you drop him off at the minor council, what that does is it renews your Doge Favors card. So for instance, later on in the game, let's say I really want that four points, but I really need a coin or I really need a scrolls. So I use this. If I delivered, made, you know, delivered the tax man to wherever he needed to go, I could unflip this and have it later on to use in the game. And you can keep doing that as long as you're delivering this tax man to his next destination. When he gets to his next destination, of course, you'll throw over the other smuggler card and see where he wants to go next. And that's the game. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Woo. <laughs> First off, uh, should you get the expansion? Yes, you should, I think. Because this game is great, it's great, it's an awesome game, I love it, it's a great pickup and deliver game. But the board for this one, not as good as the board for this one. This, this one allows more space for the boats to dock. It allows spaces to put your apprentice, you can clearly see where to go. And 
Uh, this one, this, this map has you put it on the tile, which means you're always moving the tile to move around. I'll be honest, I love the look of the board, the original board, and I don't like this one as much, even though I get why it's all like that, because it's Da Vinci's Workshop. But yeah, j just for the board alone, you should probably get this. Um, I also like how the three little mini, well, the, the, the Da Vinci and the Admiral, they're not the most important pieces on the board. You'd rather, in fact, the very first thing I did was I took one of them in one game. I think I did the Admiral. No one took him from me. Well, I never got influence. Well, it's a good thing, but you'd probably rather finish. I found out that I, I was visiting there from then on out, not to get the Admiral anymore, but I wanted to finish an order without having to travel halfway across the board. Or I wanted to go to Da Vinci's area and get one of them fly machine tokens. You only get two, but they're great. And then if you didn't get that, well then maybe I want to move two of my apprentices around the areas to have stronger actions next time. You definitely want to do that too. But getting Leonardo da Vinci, I got him in another game, and yeah, it was nice. I could pay one less scroll or one less cube. But I didn't really use that um, ability that much, and no one else has used or gotten any of those people. In fact, no one's delivered the tax man except for me. So you don't really need that mini expansion either because the tax man, the only time I delivered him was once because he, he needed to go to the building that was right next to it. So I delivered him. I used my special ability, then got to unflip it and use it later on for four victory points. No, I think I used it again for like two scrolls or something. And uh, after that, the tax man needed to go halfway across the board. And I'm like, screw that, I ain't taking him. I mean, maybe if I had a Da Vinci token, I'd take him. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Those three pieces, which I thought, oh man, those would be huge. Not gaining influence, I mean, intrigue when you're passing other boats, that's big. But the other actions on there are bigger. To, to pay one coin, to get rid of one um, intrigue and uh, <clears throat> go up the track, that's important. That's huge. That's probably more important than getting the animal. I love how they have it. They made those two player pieces the least exciting thing about it. Yeah, you'll get some bonuses if you take them, but right then and there, those immediate actions, those give you the biggest rewards, and you have to take them. Neither time when we played did anyone steal Da Vinci or the Admiral from me, and no one delivered the tax man but me, and I think I only delivered him once in each game. So, I mean, I, I like how they're not deal breakers in the game. Should you get the game? Yes. What about just the base game? If you get the base game, that's fine. Um, if, you, if you get the expansion, I, I would try to get the expansion nail it down because I do like the board a little bit better. But if you, if you said, no, man, I can, I can deal with the regular board. I mean, that's, that's nothing wrong. Like I said, it's just a smaller board where it has a little bit of issues with it, but nothing that would deter me from playing it. Wow, this is a great game. Really great game. I love pick up and deliver games and that you're moving your gondola each time. You gotta be thinking on two different moves. You gotta move either of the boat. And at first we said, we'll never pay three coins. We'll never pay three coins to keep them. People were paying three coins to keep them in that boat because they had to do that last turn to get that delivery. Really smart game, really awesome game. Love it, love it, love it. That is Venice. All right, folks, that's it for now. Until next time, game on!